Watch Dr. Drew's new show at 9 on HLN. Weeknights on HLN. All right, so now do we all think the prosecution has satisfactorily proven that Casey killed Kaylee? And now the defense announces a surprise star witness. I, I thought this only happened on TV shows. You, the, the attorneys in my group here are going to have to straighten me out on this. Uh, this guy is an Orlando felon with a violent past. I think it was, yeah, a history of kidnapping, apparently. Here's the big surprise. Phone records show Casey's dad, George Anthony, called this guy four times just one day before Cindy Anthony made this frantic phone call. So it's Kaylee, listen. Kaylee, listen. Casey says Danny took her a month ago. She's been missing for a month. Oh, it is just, it is so hard to see the torture that Cindy had to go through. All right, now, George's attorneys say George has no idea who this guy is. Joining me to discuss this now are attorney Lisa Bloom. She's with me here in the studio. We also have criminal defense attorney Mark Eiglarsh. Mark, I don't see your Leonard Padilla hat. I'm a little disappointed. Uh, and, <laughs> Retired. <laughs> and host of In Session on True TV, Ryan Smith. So, Ryan... What are you finding out about this surprise star witness down there in Orlando? Oh, this was a bombshell. We didn't expect this. And what we're finding out is you mentioned this man, his name is Vasco Thompson. You mentioned that he's a convicted felon. That's right. He served a 10-year prison sentence for kidnapping. And the crux of all this is that he made those four phone calls, that at least they're claiming, defense investigators are claiming, made four phone calls to George Anthony's phones the day before Cindy made that phone call you just mentioned. Now, I think this could be an effort to pin all of this on George because the defense is introducing this, and the reason they're saying it's coming in so late is they're saying they just learned about this, and because of his violent past and these phone call connections, they're bringing it up in good faith this late in the day, and they should be able to depose him. But this, to me, sounds like something that they're going to try to use to pin this on George Anthony. Ryan, what do you think this guy's going to get on the stand and say? Well, first of all, Dr. Drew, he's been refusing, according to these documents, to talk to investigators so far, to talk to prosecutors, to be interviewed. I think the only thing he could testify to is that he made these phone calls, and the defense is then going to ask him, what were you calling him about? What did you want to talk about? Now, Mark Lippman, who is George Anthony's attorney, gave a very interesting response. He said, George says he never got these calls, never talked to him. There's no talk about the length of time or whether or not these calls were made by George or this guy, Vasco Thompson. So in a sense, they're saying, I don't know anything about about this guy. Well, Lisa, I saw you re reading the attorney's statement that he had dis disavowed any knowledge of the guy, and you went, oh, the attorney's saying that. You mean right. that's not necessarily coming from George? Uh, that's right. This is a very strange turn of affairs, but this does uh, no happen. No kidding. This does happen in real trials. This has happened in my trials because the argument, really? look, because here's what happens. As the attorney, you have investigators out there all the time pursuing leads, and maybe at the last minute, you do find something, and if you do, you can bring it to the attention of the court. Now, if you knew about it before, this should have been disclosed in pretrial discovery, but you tell me, you give me a good answer as to why George Anthony has four phone calls with a convicted kidnapper the day before Kaylee is reported missing. I mean, that certainly would make me scratch my head. If I'm the judge, I'm saying, okay, I want to hear from this I guy. I want to hear. Mark Eiglarsh, what do you think we're going to hear? I want to hear, too. And it may mean nothing. It may be the defense is fishing. They're trying to find something. But I think there's enough that the judge would have to let them explore it. If they don't, and the judge says, no, I'm not going to, no, I'm not going to deal with it. You should have known about it. You waited then we're going to be dealing with this on appeal, either because Jose is ineffective because he should have found this out sooner or because the judge just steamrolled this along and didn't let the defense explore all options. Well, I, but I'm confused. I, let, me, let me tell you something else was reported recently. We have a CNN reporter, Gary Tuckman, who ran into Cindy and George in the elevator in the courtroom, and he observed something interesting. Listen to this. I walked out with them, and they walked to the elevator. It was a long elevator ride. And for 23 floors, they just held each other, and they cried. And she put her head in his chest, and he put his head down towards her. And it was a very tender moment. It, it, was, it was very poignant. It was very sad watching this. I mean, I've never seen people who have to go through so much in any legal case. 
Right, right. It, it's almost like we're putting these this couple through torture. If, if they haven't had some complicity here, it's it's really yeah. bad times. But remember, now George had tried to take his own life some months ago. It was a year ago, something like that. Yeah. And this man, this is serious stuff. Yeah, we should never forget these are real people. Yes, you know, we watch yes. them on TV and we think they're like television stars or movie stars, and they're not. They're real people, and you can only imagine. Really, none of us can imagine the media crush for three years after their granddaughter is first missing, then discovered dead, and then their daughter is put on trial for her murder. I mean, it is horrendous. And I've gone through high-profile trials with people like this. People say, oh, they're faking it, they're crying, they have no affect. You know, whatever they're going through, it's horrendous. And we should never lose sight of that. Well, and Mark, my question is, thank you, Lisa, my question to Mark, what is the defense going to put George through here? I mean, how much torture and what, 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 is, you know, what, what are we up against here? Here's the answer. The defense will do whatever it takes to win an acquittal. If that means slaughtering George's reputation, if that means doing horrific things, their number one purpose, their goal, their function in this case, in every case, is towards their client, whether you like it or not. Yeah, but that's why we have a judge, you know, to run interference and say this isn't about just tarring and feathering this man. It's not about bringing up, you know, every right. incident from the past, whether he had an affair, he's accused of molesting his daughter, etc. This is a murder trial, and the question is whether this little girl was murdered by her mother. And I hope the defense doesn't just allow the the, the, the I hope the judge doesn't allow the defense to run roughshod over this man because I don't think that's right.